Hey everyone, Donovan Brown here. Welcome to Ignite. I'm joining you today from Houston, Texas, where I started my career as a developer in 1996. As a developer, I'm always delighted to share how Microsoft is empowering every developer to innovate with Microsoft Azure. Thanks to the power of the cloud, today, as developers, we can impact every person on the planet. Microsoft's focus is on empowering developers to help address real-world needs of customers with the Microsoft Cloud. To unlock business value for every organization, from large enterprises to family-run businesses. Developers are the builders of our era, creating the ideas and writing the code that enables digital transformation for organizations around the world. Pioneering innovation that has disrupted industries and helped businesses endure tough times. As more of the world moves online and every organization rethinks their business, empowering developers has never been more important. Partnering with many of our customers allows our work to help millions of organizations and billions of people. Many companies across every industry are relying on software as a strategic advantage and developers are at the center of app innovation. Microsoft is working closely with customers around the world and supporting development teams who are looking to adopt best-in-class tooling to support their changing development needs, including remote developer productivity. Let's talk about a great example. Carhartt, a U.S.-based retailer that produces millions of outdoor garments and accessories every year. In current times, Carhartt needed their remote developers to repurpose some of their tools so they could mitigate the unforeseen consequences of the pandemic including helping make distribution decisions and handling the flood of customer calls and online orders. Microsoft partnered with Carhartt to support their development teams to work securely from anywhere using any device with everything they need, including the Visual Studio family of tools and Azure. Enabling Carhartt developers to work from anywhere seamlessly and securely using the tools they know and love, Carhartt was able to ensure business continuity and increase the developer productivity. While best-in-class tools are critical to empower developers, one of the most important drivers for innovation is public cloud adoption. With Azure, you have access to a broad range of services to build rich solutions while focusing on delivering value, not infrastructure. Azure is open and it supports your favorite languages, open source frameworks, databases, and tools. Azure also makes it easy to learn new skills and grow. The app innovation conversation is made up of three parts. First, modernizing existing applications. This may involve refactoring them to benefit from increased resiliency, scalability, and operational costs, or completely re-architecting them to increase agility and rate of innovation. Next, building new intelligent applications. These are applications designed for the cloud to provide new capabilities for their businesses and to improve customer experience. And finally, tooling to develop for the cloud. As developers, we require best-in-class tools to support our transformation and adoption of new skills, including DevOps best practices. Today, we're going to show you all the latest innovations and in how we support every developer with their journey to build and deploy modern applications with Azure and how we meet our customers where they are. Let's start by talking about the importance of modernizing applications. When it comes to public cloud adoption, a common motivation for customers is to modernize their apps. Azure supports modernization patterns such as lift and shift to VMs, modernizing apps using PaaS services and managed databases to fully containerized microservices. Adopting modern application development practices boosts customers' operations before, during, and after their modernization journey, which we support with our comprehensive DevOps toolchain. App Service, one of my favorite services in Azure, supports ASP.NET, ASP.NET Core, Java, Ruby, Node.js, PHP, and Python. App Service hosts millions of apps and is the only fully managed app platform with native support for Windows. With the recent GA of Windows container support, we can now run a wide array of existing .NET applications on App Service. We also offer free and easy to use tools to migrate existing code to Azure. Today, we're introducing the .NET Upgrade Assistant that helps you modernize older .NET code bases. It's a command line tool that gives you step-by-step -step instructions for upgrading to the latest versions of .NET. The .NET Upgrade Assistant is in preview and being used by Optimizee, an Epi server company, to move their large, mission-critical applications to .NET 5. 
Azure can help with any language, including Java, and I'm happy to announce new capabilities to run Java EE and Spring apps. The Azure Marketplace now offers automated templates for Oracle WebLogic Server on VMs. We have new guidance and automated scripts for WebLogic on AKS and IBM WebSphere on AKS or Azure Red Hat OpenShift. Azure Spring Cloud is enhancing the experience of enterprise applications with VNet integration and auto scaling becoming generally available. Now let's talk about building new intelligent applications with Azure. Increasingly, we see customers who are innovating at a faster pace using cloud native architectures with loosely coupled microservices, managed databases, AI, DevOps best practices, and built in monitoring to detect issues before they happen. These apps typically are powered by elastic infrastructure that adjusts to varying load, supports zero downtime deployments, and provides low latency access to data worldwide. Azure is constantly adding new features and capabilities to keep our customers ahead of the curve. We offer a unique end-to-end -end solution that allows you to build rich applications in partnership with non-traditional developers, enabling you to tap into talent from across your organization. All of our services are well integrated with a portfolio of developer tools from the Visual Studio family of tools, GitHub, and Power Apps. Azure Communication Services is our fully managed communication platform that enables developers to quickly adapt to customer needs and connect with them through engaging communication experiences. ACS makes it easy to add calling and messaging capabilities to mobile and desktop application and websites using the same secure platform that powers Microsoft Teams. With flexible SDKs and APIs for common languages and platforms, including .NET, JavaScript, iOS, Android, and web, businesses can start building rich communication experiences on a secure and global platform in days, not months. We have exciting new updates to share about ACS. First, ACS just previewed interoperability with Microsoft Teams, allowing for communication experiences between users of a custom app or website with users on Microsoft Teams. This will enable businesses to stay more connected with their customers. Next, ACS is powering conversational AI experiences over traditional phone lines with a new telephony channel through Azure Bot Service, also in preview. And lastly, Azure Communication Services will become generally available later this month. By combining different fully managed services in Azure, you can create powerful cloud-native applications that deliver great experiences for your customers. Here is an e-commerce example using the Tailwind Traders website. We're going to use this to show you ACS in action. With ACS, you can easily integrate voice and video calling as well as SMS notifications into existing websites. Using the ACS SDK, you can incorporate these capabilities into your code deployed in Kubernetes or integrated with other Azure services seamlessly, taking advantage of over 200 Logic App connectors for a no-code solution. I'd like to welcome Jessica and Bob to show us how Azure Communication Services can help you incorporate communication capabilities into cloud-native applications. Here's Jessica and Bob. Hi, everyone. My name is Jessica Dean, and I'm here with Bob Sayre from the Azure Communication Services team. And we're here to talk to you about how you can use Azure Communication Services to bring voice, video, and text messaging to your existing websites. Hi, everyone. All right, let's jump right in. Now, I have here the e-commerce website Tailwind Traders, which is a home improvement store. And it has a lot of what you would expect from a typical e-commerce website. Now, while the website itself is not overly complex, it's very well architected for easy deployment and scale. There's 11 different microservices written in tons of different languages, and it's all hosted in Azure Kubernetes service. Now, the site itself has loads of great functionality already, but I was wondering, Bob, do you think I can add any additional benefits with Azure Communication Services? Yeah, absolutely. So how about a live chat? Maybe when a customer wants to ask a question to an actual Tailwind employee, they can just start a video call, kind of like an ask, ask the expert. That sounds awesome, but to be completely honest, I really don't want to invest a ton of time in setting this up. Yeah, so actually Azure Communication Services makes this functionality really easy to do. I've already started adding this capability into the Tailwind project. So since Tailwind already has a place to log in users, all we have to do is connect to Azure Communication Services and give that user access to create a video call. So I've already started this code. I have the code open. How about we collaborate in a Visual Studio Code live share session? Let's do it. All right, so I see that you've actually already created a new controller class to the project right here on line 20. That's exactly right. So 
right here, I'm gonna create a communication identity client which will connect into Azure Communication Services and it's gonna use the resource connection string that I've gotten from the admin portal. So down here, all I need to do is I'm gonna create, I'm basically gonna go and use Azure Communication Services to create a token that will give the user access to make video calls. I'm gonna create a REST API in the Tailwinds backend and then I'm gonna pass that token back up to my client. Okay, cool. So then once the user has access, then we're just going to have to actually initiate the call from the web front end, right? That's exactly right. So I can do that now. So right here in the video.js file, I'm going to create a call client that's going to use that token that was just passed up. And then it's actually really easy to go and set up a bunch of device manager properties. I can control the camera, the mic, etc. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an outbound call. And then in this code here, I'm going to wait for that call to get set up. I'm going to look at the video stream when it's available, and I'm gonna take the view of that stream and attach it into my HTML page, which will then render, render the video. So I've already got the code done, I've tested it, and I've already issued a pull request. Awesome, so I already see that pull request now, actually. And since this code is hosted in GitHub, all pull requests actually kick off a GitHub Actions workflow, which is custom for Tailwind traders. And specifically in this case of Tailwind traders, since we use Azure Kubernetes service, the workflow is gonna create an isolated environment with the contents of the pull request you just opened. So we can actually test all these changes now before merging into main. That's awesome. So let's give it a try. So I've got the Tailwind's site open here and I'm browsing through kitchen accessories and I'm really interested in buying a coffee maker. So if I flip over here, then I've got this start video chat button. So all I need to do is enter my name, join the meeting, and now I can just wait for you to connect as the representative. Hi, I'm Jessica, Tailwind Traders. How can I help you today? I'm Bob and I'm looking for a coffee maker. Awesome, we have quite a few models to choose from and I'm just gonna walk out to our showroom here and just out of curiosity, how much coffee do you drink? A lot. Okay, so we have this model, which is quite nice. It makes a lovely espresso. You can feel as though you're traveling. However, it's a little bit hard to use. I think you might like our most popular model. That's this little fun machine right here, which actually has a water reservoir, and it can hold up to 12 cups of water, and you can make as much coffee as you want with these little pods. And best of all, it comes in colors. I want that one in red. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and get that package and it'll be available for pickup at the front for you. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Wow. You know, I was really worried that given our complicated website that we were going to have to make some pretty big changes, but the changes were actually incredibly simple thanks to the Azure Communication Services SDK. Now, you know, one more thing that would be extra cool is if a customer could actually sign up for text notifications when their order is ready for pickup. Yeah, definitely. That would be super cool. So with Azure Communication Services, it's really easy to go and provision a phone number that you can use to send text messages. So you can do it in code if you want, but the way that I like to do it is to use a low code option like Azure Logic Apps. So using Logic Apps, you can basically fire an event off of a trigger that will send the SMS message. Okay, so when our backend data store is updated and the product is now available, we can actually use that as a trigger for our Azure Logic App to send the text notification? Yep. That's pretty cool. All right, so in just a few minutes, we showed you just how easy it is to add video chat and SMS messaging to your existing websites. Now, personally, I loved how wiring up these customer experiences was so incredibly easy and Azure Communication Services made it all possible. It sure did. I'm glad you enjoyed learning more about Azure Communication Services. Back to you, Donovan. Thank you, Jessica and Bob. Let's finish by discussing what it takes to develop for the cloud. As resilient developers, we expect our tools to allow us to code, collaborate, and ship from anywhere. The developer experience for Azure brings best-in-class tools, SDKs for every language, support for continuous collaboration and delivery, as well as Power Apps and Power BI. The cloud-powered development environments that make any device a development machine allows us to work flexibly and address the challenges of remote work. We can collaborate without friction as a distributed team and collaborate with the open source community in natural ways. And we can ship securely with services that allow us to monitor how our code is performing and maintain confidence remotely. 
Azure provides an end-to-end -end developer experience that helps us create reliable, global, and secure applications faster with integrated collaboration that helps our teams perfect new skills together. Azure allows us to automate our code to cloud workflow, build, test, package, deploy, and release to multiple Azure services, from web apps to serverless functions and Kubernetes. We can integrate compliance and security into critical stages of the software development lifecycle with Azure policy and container scanning. Now, I'd like to welcome Abel to show us how we can automate our code to cloud workflow with Azure. Here's Abel. We all live in a cloud world now. And because of this at Microsoft, we want to make sure you all have an excellent code to cloud experience. And central to this experience is GitHub. Check this out. Here is my Tailwind Traders app, and it's loaded up in Visual Studio 2019 with my code up in GitHub. Now, to deploy this into Azure, I'll use the new right-click and publish experience, where instead of publishing directly from your machine, we'll create for you a CI CD workflow using GitHub Actions. Check this out. I'm going to right-click on my project, select Publish. We're going to publish into Azure, and specifically into Azure App Service on Linux. Next, I'll select the specific Azure resource to deploy into. We're going to publish automatically using GitHub Actions. I'll click Finished, and that's it. Because now, Visual Studio is going to create for me my workflow definition file. And what's this workflow going to do? It's going to build my application, run all of my unit tests, package everything up, and then it'll deploy my application into the resource that we just picked. All right, I do need to check this workflow definition file in. So let's give this a good message. We'll commit and push this into GitHub. All right, let's jump into GitHub and see what's really going on. So here's my GitHub repo. We'll refresh, and you can see that I just checked in my CI CD workflow. Here is the workflow definition file that we just checked in. And if we click on Actions, you'll see that we just triggered our action. And this action is going to go ahead and build my application, run all of my unit tests, package everything up, and then it'll take the bits that it just built and deploy it into the Azure App Service in my subscription that we just picked. Pretty cool, right? All right. Granted, that workflow created by Visual Studio is pretty simple. I mean, it's just deploying to Azure App Service. But you know what? At Microsoft, we've created GitHub Actions to help you easily build, test, and deploy for everything Azure, including managing Azure policy. And you can get all of these actions from the GitHub Marketplace. And with all these actions, now you can literally do anything you want or need into Azure for your CI CD workflows. Check this out. We're going to start from nothing, right? So here's my Azure subscription. It's completely empty. Let's jump back into GitHub and we'll kick off this specific workflow. Now, let's refresh so we can see exactly what this workflow is doing. <laughs> this is a pretty complex workflow, right? And that's because this is a pretty complex app. First, we have a web front end written in .NET Core and React, and we want to host this using Azure App Service. Next, we have a set of backend APIs that are written in Node that we want to host in a Kubernetes cluster. We also have a set of Azure functions written in .NET for some backend services. And finally, our data is being held in Cosmos DB, and we also have Azure Storage to hold our uploaded videos and pictures. Now, that's a lot of freaking moving pieces. But you know what? Our CI CD workflow using GitHub Actions, it takes care of everything for us. Let's dive in and I'll show you. Now, this workflow, it takes a long time to complete. So let's look at one I did earlier. So the first thing I'm going to do in this workflow is in parallel, I'm going to kick off builds for all three parts of my app, the web front end, the services layer, and also the API layer. Let's drill into the API layer so we can see exactly what it's doing, right? First of all, remember, this is written in Node, and I want to host this in a Kubernetes cluster. So I build this container image with Docker. And when I'm done creating my image, I do a security scan on the image using the Azure Container Scan action. So this way, I can get some confidence that the image I'm pushing is legit and free from vulnerabilities. Now, after I scan my image, I then push my container up to Azure Container Registry. And since my final destination is Kubernetes, I'm going to package everything up with Helm. Again, all of this 
easy enough to do because we have Azure Actions that help us do all of this. All right, so once our build is done, I'm gonna fan back out and in parallel, I'm gonna provision all the infrastructure that I need using ARM templates, which are checked into our repository. And again, since we have ARM deploy actions, deploying infrastructure as code using ARM templates, it's pretty easy to do. All right, so now once all of my infrastructure has been provisioned, I fan back in and now I do a policy scan on my subscription using Azure Policy. So here is Azure Policy running in my portal. And using this, I can create policy as code that locks down my resources to make sure everything is provisioned correctly and follows policy and doesn't do anything dangerous or insecure. And once I'm done doing that, I can export that policy as code into my GitHub repository. And once I do that, now in my workflow, I can use that policy as code in a compliance scan using our policy scan action. And now if our newly provisioned and configured infrastructure does breaks policy, it's gonna flag it and immediately stop that workflow. All right, so now once my, once my policy scan is done, I fan back out and again in parallel, I deploy all my code to all the resources using our Azure GitHub actions. Now, finally, if all that is done, let me scroll back to where we were, I go ahead and in parallel again, I set up my DNS and I set up HTTPS. So now everything has been provisioned, configured, and deployed to my staging environment. And my workflow, check this out, it's now waiting for a manual approver, right? Because it, we need to make sure that what we deployed, we deployed successfully. All right, so let's go check out if everything got deployed, configured, provisioned, all that stuff was done successfully. If we jump back into my Azure portal, let's press refresh and dun, 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 bam, there's all our resources provisioned and configured with our application deployed in it. If we jump back to our workflow, you can see that when I deploy to staging, there is a link to my application running in staging. So if I click it, bam, there's my application up and running. Awesome, everything looks good. So now we can jump back to our workflow. Let's review this. It looks good, looks fantastic really. And let's approve this. And let's see, we'll go ahead and approve this and check this in. And once we approve this, now our workflow is gonna wake back up, start running, and now it's gonna provision, configure, and deploy into our production environment. So there you go, from nothing at all to my app fully running, all using GitHub Actions. Azure has got everything you could possibly need, from VMs to serverless to load balancers on a global scale. And now with all the abilities in Azure and GitHub, going from code to cloud has never been easier, no matter how complex your scenario. Thanks, Abel. Software development is a constantly evolving craft, and developer tools need to reflect the changes in modern development workflows. At Microsoft, we are deeply committed to infuse modern development practices and emerging trends into our tools. We aim to support every developer, no matter their skill level. As developers, with the Microsoft platform, we have access to the latest technologies and a cutting edge tool chain that supports the way that we work. Visual Studio 2019 version 16.9 is now generally available with new features including built-in Git workflows, create and clone repos, push tags and more with an improved UI. New integrations to set up CI CD to deploy your .NET app to Azure and debug your .NET Core apps directly in WSL. Go to visualstudio.com and download it today. We keep investing in low code development with Power Apps, making it easier for anyone to innovate with Azure. We have listened to your feedback and are building a low code programming language that will leverage the Excel formula language. To help developers modernize existing applications, build new intelligent applications, and develop for the cloud from anywhere, Microsoft strives to empower every developer with the most comprehensive developer toolkit and platform. In today's environment, software development excellence is becoming even more critical for business success. And as developers, we are more critical than ever before. 
to provide key lessons on what it takes to accelerate business performance through software excellence, we partner with McKinsey and Company, HashiCorp, GitHub, and five of our customers in the retail and finance industry that are true technology leaders. Today, I'm excited to announce the availability of a new developer velocity report that provides in-depth industry findings to accelerate software transformations and a new release of the Developer Velocity Assessment Tool, which helps every organization understand their digital readiness and guide their journey to the cloud. Ignite is filled with information on how we empower every developer with Azure. So take advantage of our other app development sessions at Ignite. And as always, you can go to azure.com for the latest information. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. We can't wait to see what you build with all this amazing innovation. Enjoy the rest of Microsoft Ignite.